Welcome to Scorched Earth. This is going to be a general reading for the sign of Gemini, Sun, Moon and Ascendant. If you don't know what your Moon and Ascendant signs are, have a look in the description box below. There's a link down there that will help you. Uh, if you're after a personal reading, I do take them, um, but I'm working on quite a backlog at the moment. So feel free to email me. Emails in the description box. Um, <clears throat> but it might be a week or so before I get back to you, um, just so you know. What else to tell you? Mercury retrogrades coming up. It's like 16th, 17th of February or something like that. I forget. I'll have a look. Don't panic. There's nothing to worry about. You may find old people, old situations, old uh, emotional states potentially resurface. But they're happening for you, not to you. And they're giving you an opportunity to close out those cycles properly. That's what the energy is for. So, you know, use it as it's meant and uh, you have nothing to worry about. Just try not to start anything new. You know, um, if you take up a new job, make sure you've read all the fine print. You know, big purchases, kind of avoid, put them off a little bit. So, <clears throat> sorry for making you wait, uh, Jenny, particularly. My beautiful, beautiful Jenny. Interesting fact, actually, since about October, I think, last year, I haven't used um, a stock photo for my YouTube thumbnails um, at all. There have been photos that either I have taken or my friends have taken that happen to be in my Google Photos. And uh, this month's was Jenny's. Thank you, Jenny. So let's get three cards for February. Three cards for Gemini, please, for February. Ooh. Ace of Wands. Nice. Fire energy. Two more cards. Please. Temperance. Like it. That's card of Sagittarius in the Major Arcana. Numbered 14. I like it. And what's coming towards Gemini? That one. The Magician which for me is the card of Gemini, right there. <clears throat> Never used to um, associate it with a sign, um, but then I watched a TED talk on abracadabra. Yeah, I create as I speak, and it made perfect sense to me that that would be the magician right there. So Gemini it is. On the bottom of the deck, we've got the Empress. This is some really powerful energy, Gemini. I like it. Right, let's have a look and see which deck wants to. Ooh. Definitely the marigold. All right. Just give these a quick shuffle. Right. Why is the ace of wands here for Gemini, please? Temperance. Interesting. Why is the Ace of Wands here, please, for Gemini? Ooh. We have the Eight of Cups. That's water energy. Hmm. I'm trying to think what sign that's associated with, and I can't bring it to mind. Never mind. Now for your present. Why is Temperance here? Gemini, please. Getting a lot of flippers here. Okay, we've got the Four of Cups and the Hermit. Hermit is the card of Virgo. I think I see where this is going. And the Magician. Why is the Magician here, please? What's coming towards Gemini? Not having it being a secret. Come on, there's the magician here. Ooh, Justice, card of Libra, number 11. And one more for the magician. Ah. We have the sun. I like that. Ooh, I'm getting chills. On the bottom of the deck, we've got death, the card of Scorpio. This feels very important. I'll tell you that before I even start. Wow. 
have you got going on, Gemini? Right, first card that you've got, like I said, is the Ace of Wands. It's the seed of the fire suit. Within this card is the full potentiality of fire. Right, so we're talking about um, creativity. We're talking about passion. We're talking about um, imagination, inspiration, things like that. And it's any kind of recent past position. Now, it can indicate a great many things, like I just said. It can also indicate relationships. I've got a friend who calls this the dig card. Um, for good reason, I think. <clears throat> but whatever it is, it's something new. And this is something that's come into your environment in the in the recent past, right? And it might be a relationship, possibly. It might be a sexual relationship. That's also possible. But it's something that makes your blood run hot. You know, so it could literally be anything that you're passionate about. You know, if you just started a new business and you really, really believe in what you're doing, then that could be indicated by this here. You know, if you've had a spark of inspiration from the universe about doing a thing you know it's going to be amazing you know that it could be a hobby you know if you're sufficiently passionate about it, it could be it could certainly be that but it is something that's made you feel very passionate and then we've got these two cards underneath right temperance and the eight of cups and like I said, Temperance is the card of Sagittarius, and I'm going to try and avoid going into it too deeply because it is literally the next main card on here. <clears throat> it talks about spiritual alchemy, I think. It's a fire card, but there's always lots of water depicted on there. There's a great healing energy that comes with this card. You know, we've all heard heard the saying about not being able to pour from an empty cup. And there's a sense here that you have been refilling your cup. There's a sense of self-care. There's a sense of pulling your resources back to yourself in order to take care of yourself and heal yourself. And because it's numbered 14 and that reduces down to a five and fives are about conflict and change and adversity and, you know, uncomfortable change quite often. So for me, it's the healing period after a shift of some description, after a change, after something that you weren't really comfortable with. Yeah, here comes the healing. It can talk about divine timing and it can talk about patience and all those things as well, but I get a real sense of, of the healing aspect of this card being the important thing, you know, and the, the pulling back of those energetic resources that maybe you've had a spread a little too thin over other people, pulling those back in now and looking after yourself. It's funny, this skeleton angel thing <clears throat> is pouring from a jug into what looks like a soup urn <clears throat> right there. And it's very graceful. <clears throat> and then we've got the Eight of Cups. Yeah, it's skulls, but it's cups. And this talks about leaving behind things that no longer serve you. Right? <clears throat> it takes a while to accumulate Eight Cups. Right? And in a standard depiction, there's a chap and he's, he's turned, done an about face, he's got his cloak on, he's got his walking stick, his walking boots, and he's walking off under the light of an eclipse, actually, leaving behind these eight cups. And they're stacked in such a way that your eye is drawn to the fact that there is one missing. Right? It, the way they're stacked is just that there should be nine. And the nine of cups is the wish fulfillment. For whatever reason, all the time and the care and the effort and the energy that went into amassing these eight cups no longer now feels worth continuing with, right? So it's kind of like an easy walking away because where you were once emotionally invested in the situation, now you are not. And because that link is broken, because that bond has gone, it's easier than one might imagine to be able to turn your back on it and walk away. <clears throat> and it feels like the act of walking away from whatever it was that you did walk away from is what brought about this healing, is what has allowed you to bring your energy back to yourself and concentrate on healing yourself. What is not immediately clear to me is whether it is a new relationship that's done that, or walking away from a new relationship, walking away from something that made your blood run hot, but made your heart run cold. 
you know, maybe there was just a, you know, friends with benefits situation and you kind of realised that it wasn't going where you thought it was going. Maybe you invested emotionally in it and the other person didn't, moving away. I might pull another card for that, actually. Um, you, that one. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a sore throat. My children just germ factories. You've got five children and they're all at different establishments. They'll come back with, you know, the flavour of the day. <coughs> In respect of germs. So. Even have a chance to get the, uh, get the question out there. Got the moon and the three of cups. Maybe you walked away from a third party situation. Yeah. Or maybe you spent a bit of time in introspection. Maybe your gut has been telling you for a while that what you have been pouring emotion into, you know, all these resources that you've been putting into it, it's not actually going to get the reward that you're after. You know, maybe you've been stuck in this situation. The Three of Cups doesn't have to be rather a third party situation it doesn't have to be a relationship of two people with someone on the side you know the third party situation could be work as the third party it could be you know a family member that keeps sticking their oar in you know take it as it resonates to you but i feel like on a subconscious level this has been going along underneath for a little while and it's kind of been tugging at you and your intuition's been going mm -hmm. and finally you've brought it up to the fore and you've realized that whatever this third thing is here you know this extra spoke in the wheel it's not doing it for you anymore and you've turned your back on it and you've walked away then in the present we have temperance so i feel like what you started with this in the recent past, you are now very much continuing in your present right now. There's such a gentle energy to this card. You know, it looks like it's underwater. And as I said, there's always a lot of water depicted on, on the temperance cards, even though it's a fire energy one. Yeah, it's water is feelings and emotions and things like this. This person's literally sunk to the bottom of the lake but there's no struggle, they're not drowning, you know, it's a, actually a mermaid, I think, and the, even the dog's down there as well. It's peaceful, it's serene, it's like you've dropped into your emotions because you've been able to start filling yourself back up again. Now you're in a comfortable place with where you are, you're comfortable with what you think. And you're comfortable without your energy being drained, you know, there's been an energy leak somewhere you've plugged it and in doing so you've allowed your you know energetic bathtub to refill and these two cards that we've got down here to clarify the four of cups and the hermit this is the card of virgo amongst other things the four of cups often talks about rejection of offers taking things for granted there's a possibility that you realise that you were being taken for granted and that was what enabled you to employ this Eight of Cups energy and go, I am actually worth more than this, I'm going to walk away. Well, maybe you've just really, really entrenched the temperance energy by having this person come back to you and kind of go, hey, come on, come back, and you go, no, I'm done. And it's left you with a real peaceful sense of serenity. You know? But then we've got more introspection right here. The Hermit card tells us that all the answers that we seek are literally within us. We don't need to go looking for them externally. We just need to stay still enough for long enough that these answers that we're after from the subconscious come bubbling up to the surface you know there's a great sense of stillness there as well super stillness what i like about this marigold hermit 
as opposed to a standard one is that he's not active. Yeah. Normally, <clears throat> you've got a big beardy man, kind of Merlin-esque looking. He's got a flaming torch and he's, he's headed off in search of the answers. This dude here, he's got this light lamp lit above his head. It's like he's waiting for the answers to come to him. He's just going to sit down because he doesn't have to go digging. He knows that they're going to come and find him. More about the four of cups in a hermit. Now, yeah, see, we've got six of cups has come out here. The two of cups flipped. I'm not going to take it, but it flipped. So it could be that we're talking about a soulmate relationship here of some description. And don't forget that soulmates, you know, there's often there's this this perception of soulmates that like like you only have really one true soulmate and that, and that one is never ever going to do you wrong and you know life is going to be perfect when you meet them and stuff like that and, and the reality of soulmates is actually entirely different you know you, your soulmates are here to teach you things you know, so yes the person that you love is quite possibly your soulmate your best friend is probably your soulmate you know even your kids can be your soulmate but that person that you hate m most in the world, th th they're a soulmate too. You know, the person who hurt you more than you could possibly have ever considered surviving, that's a soulmate because they teach you things, you know, and they're in your life for a certain amount of time until the lesson is learned and then they move on and then they are gone. Right. So, soulmate, possibly. But you walked away. And it's quite possible that it's just because the lesson was learned and maybe the lesson was learning that you don't need to pour all of your energy into someone else. What you need to do is pour it into yourself. You know? <clears throat> the only people who complain about you erecting boundaries are those who benefited from you having none. Like, that's that's the vibe that I'm getting off this. Ooh, fuck. Yeah, it's eight of, Ace of Pentacles. You're making a new start. A tangible new start in a different direction. Like, is here are the soulmates here's you marching off in an entirely different direction away from them that lesson has been learned actually i'll just show you this as well the justice card has just flipped i'm going to take that as confirmation that this is a karmic situation that you've been in but you've learned the lesson and now you're ready to move off which is excellent what's you <laughs> It's the Knight of Swords, which for me is the card of Gemini, right? <clears throat> Marching off with your new truth. You know, quite a spirited fashion, I would say. There's uh, look at the blue on that card. Look at the blue on that card. Like, blue is a very spiritual colour. Like, you've levelled up with this new, you know, realisation, this new understanding. I feel like it's probably changed a lot of things in front of you. Like just to, you, just changing your perception of something can be the, the, the biggest changes possible to experience. So I'm going to just draw your attention to the fact that the death card is at the bottom of the stack. Like this talks about endings, but it also talks about intense transformation. And maybe the intense transformation isn't just this relationship, you know, transforming it from an active relationship to a, an inactive relationship, but actually you, the transformation of you, as someone who now understands their value. And I've just noticed that underneath there is the Nine of Cups. You've left your Eight of Cups behind. You've gone looking for your Nine of Cups. I didn't see that there the first time. Oh, wonderful. So the final card that you've got is the Magician. Also your card right there. It's an incredibly powerful card. This Magician. He has dominion over all of the elements, right? So he's depicted as having the sword, a pentacle, and a, a cup on his table there, and he's got a wand in his hand. Right? He knows exactly the right proportions of everything, you know, of cup energy, of pentacle energy, of wand energy to use, you know, or ratios, the right amount of intent to put forward and the right words to speak in order to manifest into the 3D anything that he could possibly desire. And this is what's coming up for you in February as a real sense of you walking into your own power. But you needed to heal first. And now that you are healing, you are tremendously powerful. We've got three major arcana for what's coming up for you 
in February, right? The Magician, clarified by Justice and the Sun. Right? So this is Libra, this is Leo. If you've got a Libra or a Leo in your existence, you know, somewhere, then they might be important to this. But if they're not, remember I said the Justice card flip before, like you've paid off your karmic debts, you've hit the end of your karmic contracts, right? And now you're starting afresh, you are manifesting a new vision for your life and a new way of doing things. I feel like you're manifesting a new way of, of, of even just speaking. I think that you're more mindful of the words that you use you know, because you are becoming increasingly aware of this ability to manifest that you have. You know, if you, if you only speak negativity, so you will only ever manifest negativity. It's not even like you're subscribing to the, po the cult of positivity either. It's a shedding of the skin that you've experienced, a shedding of old ways of doing things. And now you're so entirely focused on what you're manifesting into your existence in front of you that it's like it doesn't occur to you to be negative or positive about these things. It's just pure intent. And with the sun, this is the most positive card in the deck, you know, that the, the sun shines on all of your endeavours. It talks about getting in touch with your inner child. It talks about experiencing pure joy. It talks about not being, sorry, I'm completely distracted. There's a really beautiful spider outside my window. It's just like hurling itself around in the wind. It's very distracting. <clears throat> really quite beautiful. Where was I? I forgot completely where I was. So, <clears throat> it talks about returning to that state that we were in before we became jaded by life experiences and, and mistreatment at the hands of others. You know, it's kind of like a, a return to your shining divine state. And this is what you're manifesting for yourself. This is what you're bringing in. It sounds quite vague, but it's it's quite exciting. I'm going to write Justice and the Sun. Gamble. Oh, <laughs> I'm gambled out entirely. And that one flips. I'm going to take that as well. Yeah, see, like, we've got the Nine of Wands and the Seven of Pentacles and the Sun again, which I'm going to take as confirmation for what I've just said. But the Nine of Wands is usually about, it usually depicts a chap looking very fucked up and he's hanging off a wand and he's got you know, wands behind him and stuff like that. And there's lots of different ways of interpreting that, but it's just like, you're almost at the end. It's almost, you know, just got to fight a little bit more, you know, all the erection of boundaries, you know, things like that. But this feels entirely different. This is the John Bauer deck. So I'm not paying attention to the fact that it's the nine of wands. I'm paying attention to the picture. Look at that picture there. You see what I was talking about being a small child coming back here and whoever this is and it's like some kind of tribal elder thing if you can see but it's just about to pop a little crown on this little boy's head just gonna just just pop it down there okay you're walking in you're walking back to the state energetically that you always should have been in and that only ever comes about off the back of 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 shadow work and healing and, and all that kind of thing, but the stuff that you've been working really, really hard on. And we've got the Seven of Pentacles. And for me, the Seven of Pentacles talks about, you know, assessing where you are, assessing your, your, your current circumstances, your current situations, and deciding whether or not that is something that you want to continue with, or whether you're just going to call it quits and fuck off and do something else. You know, it's a survey of how the land lies. <clears throat> and I think that you're doing it because you need to know where you are before you know where you're going, right? Which bits of your life are good, which bits of your life need, you know, cutting out, exercising, exercising, exercising. Ooh. Interesting. And then we've got another little character here, yeah? 
little character with a crown on her head again and it's almost like you're about to embark on a tremendous adventure and it's a little bit scary because the trees are really big you know and it's a little bit dark you don't know where you're going there's an element of uncharted territory here but you're brave and you're determined you've got your crown on and you're going to do it anyway and then we've got the sun yeah there might be a leo that's important that's highly possible but this chapter off in the sunshine yeah the most positive card in the deck and it's come out twice in your reading in fact <laughs> these major arcana says there's six cards on the table here four of them are major arcana and two of them are the same you know it's absolutely beautiful the thing is it feels a little vague I, I feel like i want to kind of point you in a direction but i'm not entirely sure that i'm supposed to is the odd feeling that I'm getting off this. Um, tell you what, let's pull a couple from the Crow Tarot because this was good for this sort of thing. Where is Gemini headed? What's this adventure? We've got the King of Wands, the Three of Wands, and the King of Swords. It's the Fire King, it's the Air King, so it's yours. And then there's the Three of Wands, which talks about expanding, you know, expansion of all sorts. And at the bottom of the deck, actually, I've just noticed, we've got the Two of Wands. That talks about the planning stage, that talks about, you know, coming to a crossroads and deciding which way you are going to go. And that's where you are right now. This is what the Seven of Pentacles energy is, right? It's standing still taking a survey going I could go that way I could go that way I could go that way which way am I gonna go and then picking one you yeah. and these ones here are allowing this crow to traverse across from one side to the other you know it can talk about travel it can talk about foreign travel particularly with the Sun the three of ones and the Sun together you know, somewhere hot nice <clears throat> But the Three of Wands is the point at which you manifest all those things that you've been planning. You know, they all come to existence. They can be perceived by senses, you know, your five senses at least. And you've got the energy of these two kings to help you, right? And these are extremely compatible kings. They could be people, in which case they could be an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, man or woman, it doesn't matter. And they could be an Aquarius, Libra or Gemini, it doesn't matter, right? I kind of think they're just you though and they are they are opposites in the zodiac like you directly opposite each other so the energy between aquarius and leo here kind of bounces off each other really really well and put together creates a roaring inferno right fire air this dude is the traveler this dude is the the adventurer the explorer the shaman almost of the deck and this one is wise incredibly wise incredibly intellectual mm. he makes logical decisions right not swayed in either way do you notice how we've gone from from there being lots of cups on this side of the reading to it being more about passion and creativity and intellect and reason and logic and all of these things talking about making a big fucking inferno and you bringing it out expansion manifesting Whew, i'm so excited for you i love it right if this has resonated with you in any way i'd love it if you'd like the video or leave me a comment or something like that um kind of envious it's a good time to be a gemini i think but either way i should be back in about a fortnight for the um mid months so uh, take care and best of luck with your manifesting although you really don't you don't need it it's fine you've got this Take care.